you have a worship in your spirit, lift it up to God this morning and just bless the name of, of the Lord and just worship the Lord indeed this morning. What a freedom he has given to you. He gave you your voice. You have your voice. You have your hands. You have your legs. Your legs can still carry you. You can still wave your hands. You can still talk. Your voice has not ceased. You can still see with your eyes. You can still perceive. You can still smell. You can still taste with your tongue. Give him praise this morning. Give him worship. Worship this morning. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Father, we thank you this morning, Lord. We give you praise. Lord God Almighty, I pray that you please speak to all of us today, including me, myself. Let his words be broken into pieces that fit into every heart today. In the mighty name of Jesus. That we'll be grateful at the end of today that we came to church. In the mighty name of Jesus. And Lord, all those joining us online, Lord, from distractions and let them focus on you in the mighty name of Jesus. So we all be able to say, indeed, been blessed day. Thank you, Father, for our prayers. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Praise the Lord. Let's put hands together for the Lord and have our seats in his presence. Let's have our seats in his presence. Revelations chapter 21. Revelations chapter 21. I know this is the this is the most feared scriptures or Bible or book in the Bible that most people don't like to read. Do I have a witness? Praise God. Do I have a witness in the house? People don't like reading Revelation. I don't know why. <laughs> but you do know it's the best book that you can read, actually. So we're going to read together 1 to 8 this morning. I'm reading from the New King James Version. Um, this is blocking me. I guess we'll try to work on that, so... I'll use my own, the Bible on my tab tablet this morning. But of course, this play for everybody. Praise God. Now I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth had passed away. Also, there was no more sea. Then I, John, saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride at dawn for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people. Can we say amen to that? Amen. God himself will be with them and be their God. Can we say amen to that? Amen. And God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. Can we say amen to that? Amen. And there shall be no more death, nor sorrow, nor crying. There shall be no more pain. For the former things have passed away. Praise the Lord. Then he sat. Then he who sat on the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. Can we say amen to that? Amen. And he said to me, Write, for these words are true and faithful. Can we say amen to that? Amen. And he said to me, It is done. Can we say amen to that? Amen. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. Can we say amen to that? Amen. I will give of the fountain of the water of life, freely to him who thirst. Can we say amen to that? Amen. He who overcomes shall inherit all things, and I will be his God, and he shall be my son and daughter. Can we say amen to that? Amen. But the cowardly, unbelieving, abominable, murderers, sexually immoral, sorcerers, idolaters, and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burns with fire and brimstone which is the second death. May that not be our portion in the mighty name of Jesus. Uh, this morning, I'll be speaking to us by the grace of God on a topic I titled, God, the giver of life, as revealed through Jesus. As we begin to prepare for our conference that is coming this weekend from Friday uh, to, Saturday, to Sunday, actually from Thursday, because we're going to be having spontaneous worship here on Thursday by the grace of God, Thursday by 6.30. So it has always been the intention of God to have us with him. God always wants to be with us. He always wants us to be with him. But of course, we know that from the fall of man, it became a very big problem because God separated man from himself. And ever since then, God has always tried to work to make sure that that relationship is restored. 
And that's why you can see in the very last book of the Bible, in the uh, second to the last verse or the penultimate verse or whatever it's called, that you can see God bringing that reality again in his word. That he always wants to be with us. And that is always God's intention. And that has never changed. Help me tell your neighbor, say it has never changed. changed. Hallelujah. So the idea of God is that he wants to be in constant fellowship with us. So this morning, if you are maybe just a churchgoer, maybe this, I pray that this message will reach out to you this morning and change your heart for good in the name of Jesus so that you can have an understanding that it's not just about church. It's about fellowship. It's about relationship. That has been the idea of God from the very beginning. I pray God will give us understanding this morning. And in fact, to confirm this, that this has always been the intention of God, the book of Mark chapter 3 from verse 14 to 15, Jesus was speaking, I mean, the Bible was speaking, and the Bible says, he called them to be with him first before sending them out. In fact, and as I think, and that he, can se- he might send them out. So the first thing in the mind of God is that you, myself, will be with him. A lot of people are quick to, they want to serve, they want to work for God. Meanwhile, their life is very far away from God. Now, God is not in a hurry assignment. Praise the Lord. God is not in a hurry to give you an assignment. God wants you. Somebody say, God wants me. That has been the intention of God from the beginning. And you will see that in the book of Genesis, that the Bible recorded that at the cool of the day. Of course, the Genesis was just a summary. At the cool of the day, God will come down to fellowship with man. Why? Because out of the creations of God, we were the only one that God made in his image. Not even the angels. That's why it's so unfortunate. And I feel, you know, bad and sorry for those people. Do you know some people worship angels? Praise the Lord. Do you know that you are greater than angels? Do you know? Oh, these people don't know. Do you know that you are greater than angels? The angels are messengers. It's unfortunate that some people worship them. Some people even build houses for them. And in the, in the name of whatever religion, every church, not every church you see that is a Christian church. No. Any church can be called a church. It doesn't mean that it's a Christian church. In a Christian church, Christ is the center of the message. If it's a Christian church. But if it is not a Christian church, you can see them preach about different things. They can preach about different kind of things. Because it's not a Christian church. Because the name Christian came from being Christ-like. That's where it came from. Acts chapter 11, from verse 26, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, there about. So, the Bible in, can we look at um, Psalms 8? Psalms 8. Let's see from verse 4. Psalms 8, verse 4. Here. What is man that thou art mindful of him, and the son of man that thou visited him? The next one, verse 5. For thou hast made him a little lower than the angels. Now, of course, that's why when you are studying scriptures, you also need to understand uh, scriptures very well. And you need to study scripture with people that understand scriptures. Now, this from the original Hebrew translations was supposed to be, thou hast made him lower than God, not than angels. And what I'm saying, you can, of course, make your, do your research after church today. It's not lower than angels, actually. So, you are so important to God. So, I guess the people that, were, that worship angels, maybe this is what they have seen and they are worshiping angels. It's wrong. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. God is so mindful of you. And that's why he, he, he reminded us again, he told us again that the actual idea that he had from the beginning was that he will be with us and we will be with him. And he will be our God and we will be his people. Hallelujah. So then God can give you responsibility. Two things, very important things. The first thing, God wants you to dominate. He wants you to have dominion over the earth. And the second thing is to give you responsibility. The other, the, another mistake that some people make is that they think they are slaves of God. I am not a slave of God. Praise the Lord. Do we have any slave of God in the house? No, we are not slaves of God. We are created in the image of God. 
We are made in the image of God. So God, another responsibility he has given to us is to represent him. To represent him. So I want to tell you this morning, if you are at your of work, in your school, in wherever you find yourself, I question, am I truly representing Jesus? Because when people see you, they are expected to have seen who? Jesus. So, are you representing God? Are you representing Jesus anywhere you find yourself? Because that is the idea of God. He wanted them to be with him first, Mark chapter 3. And then he will send them out. Why is he sending them out? Can you send somebody to a meeting, somebody that you cannot trust, can you send the person out? No. So, I wonder why people are quick to want to work for God. Without walking with him. Without walking with him. Hallelujah. Praise God. So God kept on trying everything possible. And that's why he raised Moses, gave him the law. And you know, even the law just, you know, distanced man or man from God the more. It, it never brought God closer to God. And God saw that, no, this, this was not working. It wasn't working. Let's look at Hebrews chapter 8 quickly. Hebrews chapter 8. Hebrews chapter 8. I'm going to read from, I think, verse 7. Hebrews chapter 8. I'll read from verse 7. For if that first covenant had been faultless, then no place would have been sought for a second. Because finding fault with them, he says, behold, the days are coming. You know, because the old covenant kept on finding fault with people. Oh, you lied yes, You did that yesterday and all of that. He said, behold, the days are coming, says the Lord. When I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel... Has he, made, has he made that covenant already? Praise the Lord. Has he? Is he just going to make it? He made it already so that you can be with him. That's why we need to understand the scripture when we are reading it. He's not just going to make it. He did already. He said, I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah, not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers. In the day when I took them by hand to lead them out of the land of Egypt, because they did not continue in my covenant, and I disregarded them, says the Lord. Verse 10, for this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel. After those days, says the Lord, I will put in their heart, in their mind, and write their heart, and I will, make, I will be their God, and they will be my people. Is that looking like what we read in the book of Revelation? God always wants to be your God. Like I've always said, you don't need any pastor to get to God. You don't need any man of God to get to God. God did not save me with a golden blood and saved you with a silver blood. So why do you need someone else to get to God? That has always been his intention from the very beginning. That you be with him. That has always been. Hallelujah. None of them shall teach his neighbor. And none of his brothers saying, know the Lord. For all shall know me from the least of them to the greatest of them. Can you pray to God and say, God, reveal yourself to me. Go ahead and pray. Pray and say, Lord, reveal yourself to me. I want to know you on a personal basis. You will not need anyone to teach you about God. That is the intention of God, that you get to know him by yourself. He wants to be your God so that you can be his son, so that you can be his daughter. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name we have prayed. For I will be merciful to their unrighteousness. So even when you have done something very wrong, you don't have to kill yourself. The God we serve is not the God of the Old Testament. It was not God doing that. God gave them that law in the first place so that they can have relationship. But that law was imperfect because he kept on looking for their fault. So even if you have done wrong, Approach your father again. Hebrews chapter 4 verse 16. Let us come boldly. 
Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And their sins and their lawlessness did, I will remember no more. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Now, I want us to quickly look at the book of Ephesians. Chapter 1, verse 15 to 17. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 15 to 17. Therefore, I also, after I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for all the saints, do not cease to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him, in the knowledge of God. So my prayer for you, and that's why I ask us to pray that prayer, that you, God himself will reveal himself to you so that you can know God, so that you can know how to walk with God. So that you can know how to walk with God. Jesus prayed the same prayer, John chapter 17 verse 3. John 17 verse 3. Because that is the idea. Hallelujah. And this is eternal life. That they may know you, the only true God. And Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. That they may know you, the only God. So now, to know God, three things are key to know God. Three things are key to know God. One, the nature and the status of God. The nature and the state of, the status of God. Two, the character of God. And three, the will of God. The nature and the status of God. The character of God. And the will of God. Among any other things. These are about the most important if you want to know God. Indeed. And of a truth. First thing I want you to know this morning is that God is one. We are not serving three gods. Of course, I believe we trashed that question in one of the Sunday school. Hallelujah. Genesis 1, 1, 1 to 3, the Bible says, uh, in the beginning, God, that was how God introduced himself. God made the heavens and the earth, right? In verse 2, can you help me put it up? Genesis 1, 1 to 3. In verse 2, what do we have in verse 2? The Bible says, verse 2, please. The earth was without form and void, and darkness was over the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. So if, you're, if, you are, if, you have, if you have been able to box God in heaven, I'm sorry to disappoint you that God is not just in heaven. God is everywhere. Because where was he when he was making the heavens? Hallelujah. Where was he? If the Spirit of God was hovering, does that mean that the Spirit of God, if my Spirit leaves me now, then I'm not living anymore. Praise the Lord. God can be anywhere and everywhere at the same time. And God can choose to express himself the way he wants to. That's why he has expressed himself in the form of the Holy Spirit and in the form of Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So in the, God introduces that in the beginning in verse 1. In verse 2, he introduced what? In spirit, the Holy Spirit. And in, in fact, John chapter 4, 24 says that God is spirit. Now don't make me say God is not a spirit. Mm -mm. God is what? Is spirit. God is spirit. Hallelujah. And in John chapter 1, from verses 1 to 3, the Bible says in the beginning was what? Was the word. And the word was what? Was God. And the word was with who? Was with, I mean with God and the word was God. And in verse 3, he says that nothing was made that was made without him. In verse 14 of the same scripture, it says that the word became flesh. Hallelujah. Somebody give the Lord a shout in this place. So, the best, the simplified form of God for you to know is who? Is Jesus. The word became flesh. In Genesis chapter 1 verse 3, the Bible says, And God said, he introduced his word as his thought personality. And with that word, he created everything. That's the same thing John chapter 1 was saying. That nothing was made that was made without him. And that same word became what? Flesh. So the best expression of, Je of God is who? Is Jesus. So your knowing of God starts in who? Starts in Jesus. Begins in Jesus. 
People can argue, of course. There are different transformations when language is changing and all that. People can argue, oh, the correct word is not, it's Yeshua. Yes, it's Yeshua. We know the one we are calling. This, this is the modern name, Jesus. So it's also correct. Praise the Lord. Praise God. I pray that God will give us more understanding this morning. In the mighty name of Jesus. So that's why Paul was praying in that Ephesians. Verse 17, chapter 1, verse 17. He said that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. So, you can't just know God. Knowing God is beyond I am born again. Knowing God is beyond I am born again. You are born again. So, what? What next? What's next? There is, let me tell your neighbor, say there is more to God. Because if we are the host of a conference that says Jesus, the giver of life, then we need to understand the basics. We need to understand the basics so that even the least of us, eh? as he said in Hebrews chapter 8, the least of us would have known him to the point that we can tell of him. We can talk to people about him. We are not novice in the things of God. We are not novice about God. So if you are coming to church because... Uh, you want something from God? Yeah, I say congratulations, but grow up. Grow up. Don't, don't always be like those Christians and disciples or followers in John chapter 6. That were, they were looking for Jesus because of food, because of what they will get. You just need basic knowledge. You will eat because we have so many unbelievers that don't know God. They are very wealthy, very rich. So if your understanding of serving God or worshiping God is so you can get a job or get a car, Ah, it is well. Hallelujah. I'm not saying those things are not part of it, but they are supposed to be byproducts. You know, I'm a chemist. When, when I'm doing experiments in my lab, there is a particular product I am looking for. Yes, I can get byproducts. And when I look at the byproduct, I can pick out some things that are useful out of them. But initially, that's not my intention. My intention is the product, why I am doing the experiment. So, who is your focus? Jesus is your focus. Either he gives you or he does not give you. Hi. <laughs> Praise God. Praise the Lord. I pray that God will give us more understanding this morning. In the mighty name of Jesus. The spirit of wisdom. Paul was praying for us. The spirit of wisdom. Of course, that would mean spiritual insight. Of course, you, you remember in... Uh, I think um, 1 Corinthians chapter 2, the Bible was saying that who can know the, can we, can we, let me put it up. Who can know the things of a man, save the spirits of that man. So also is God. Who can know about God, who can know the things of God, save the spirit of God. Praise the Lord. So the spirit of wisdom, that is the Holy Spirit, and you have it in you. I've told us there are three levels to knowing God. First, you seek God in man. Why? Because as I'm preaching now, I can tell you that, oh, Jesus is Lord. So you need me to tell you, those are the basics. There's another higher level to that. When you are growing and you are grown, thank you so much. Okay. Thank you. When you are growing, hallelujah. And then you can see ask some bigger questions. Just like my son or any of the, the two of them will not tell me that I want to drive a car and I won't give him that car. It's not possible. So, there are two levels of you searching for God in man. The second level is searching for God in you. Why is it in you? Because you have the Holy Spirit of God on the inside of you. And he speaks to you. He communicates with you. If you allow him, if you allow him. And the third level is seeking God in God. The third level is what? Seeking God in God. Because at that time, you're already a partner. With the Holy Spirit. So you have moved at that level. To the level of spiritual wisdom. At that point. May God give us understanding. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Praise the Lord. The second one he says. By spirit of wisdom. And by revelation. And by revelation. Revelation is. Apo apocalypsis. It simply means to. To make something known instantly, 
Especially something that has been eating for a very long time. So God can reveal himself to you. He can reveal himself to you. God can reveal himself to you. But you have to be ready. You have to be ready. Let me ask your neighbor, see, are you ready for the revelation of God? So, to get us started, God demonstrated, you know, his nature of love, a character of integrity, consistency, and trustworthiness in his intention of wanting, uh, wanting to be with us. So, God simplified his image. God simplified. So, if you are looking, like I said before, if you are looking for God, where do you go? Jesus. That is the best revelation of God. That's the best. If God were to come here, <laughs> the way he is, we will leave church and run away. We will leave church and run away. <laughs> you remember in the book of Exodus, the children of Israel, they told Moses, they said, don't worry, leave us. You go and speak to him. <laughs> Whatever you hear, come and tell us. Ha! The sight of God is terrifying. So, but because he loves us so much, he simplified his image. And he came as one of his own creation. So, if you are here, you are still doubting. Hey, is Jesus God? Oh, Jesus is just a son. Or oh, some people even confuse you and say Jesus is a prophet. Oh, come on, grow up. Grow up. Hallelujah. Matthew chapter 1, verse 23. The Bible says a son shall be born and his name shall be called Emmanuel, meaning God with us. Meaning God with us. Colossians chapter 1 verse 15. Colossians 1 15, quickly. If anybody is there, you will help me do so. You can help me in the congregation as well so that we can save time. He is the image of the invisible God. So if you are looking for the invisible God, who is the image? Jesus is the image. Of course, you can read it you know, from verse 9 there about so you can have better understanding. The firstborn over all creation. Hallelujah. Hebrews chapter 1 verse 3. Hebrews chapter 1 verse 3. Thank you. Hebrews chapter 1 verse 3. The Bible says, Who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person. Jesus is the best image of God you can see or that you can or that through him you can begin to peruse on, and begin to know the person of God. Hallelujah. John 14 verse 10 that's where he was asking the disciples who do men think or say that I am? And he said John the Baptist Elijah. He said so you who do you say that I am? Hallelujah. Who do you say that I am? No 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 that's, that's, not, the, that's not John 14. John 14 was when he was telling them actually that if you have seen me, you have seen the Father. If you have seen me, you have seen the Father. If you have seen me, you have seen the Father. In John chapter 8 verse 58, it says, Before Abraham was, I am. So if somebody still confused here, if Jesus is God or not, if you are, please see me after service. Before Abraham was, I am. Revelation 22 from verse 12 to 13. He says, Behold, I come quickly, and my rewards are with me. He said, I am the Alpha and Omega. The beginning. And the, who is the beginning? God is the beginning. God is the beginning. That's why I am not serving the same God as with people in other religions. Actually, I am not in a religion. I'm just a follower of Christ. I am a Christian. Christianity is not a religion, actually. It is a way of life. It's a relationship with the Father. Hallelujah. Praise God. So, Jesus is God simplified. Jesus is God revealed. Is God revealed. Is God revealed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So, like I said before, your knowing of God begins with Jesus. That's why when Jesus was saying in Matthew chapter 16 from verse 13, that's where he was actually asking them, you know, who do men say that I am and all of that? And Jesus Christ, I mean, Peter said, you are Christ. He didn't say you are Jesus. You know, Christ is the glorified version of Jesus. The anointed one, the Messiah, the one that has come to save. 
So you are Christ, the son of the living God. Why? Because God presented himself as a son. So if you are also here, you are still thinking you will see one lamb in heaven. There are some figures of speech in the Bible. Don't, don't just read the Bible and just... That's why you need the spirit of revelation. So that you can understand. So you can understand. You are Christ, the son of the living God. So it is on that platform that your knowing God begins. It's on that platform. So when you hear Jesus saying in John chapter 10 verse 10, that I am come that you may have life and have it in abundance. Who has the authority to give life? God is the one. So if he, if he said boldly that he has come to give us life, what does that mean? He is God. Do you still have any doubt in your mind? He is God. Genesis chapter 2, verse 7. After he formed, formed man, the Bible said he breathed into the nose trees and man became what? A living. So who is the giver of life? God is the giver of life. Revealed in Jesus could say boldly that I am come. He has come. So he can... And I, I pray for you. Can you pray for yourself in the next Why not pray that the giver of life will reach out to you. Pray in the next one minute for yourself. Pray. Make sure you pray your career. Whatever is in, in every area that you think you need the ministration of, why not pray to him this morning? Is the one that can give life. Pray to him this morning. Pray to him this morning. Pray to him. And tell him to minister to you. Tell him to minister to you. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. John chapter 1 verse 4 says, In him was life. And his life was the light of men. So, the Bible says in, I think, Colossians chapter 1 verse 27, there about, the Bible says Christ in us is what? Is the hope of glory. So if I have Christ in me, and if Jesus Christ himself said in, in um, John chapter 11 verse 25, he says that I am the resurrection and the life. It's not I am the resurrection and life, no. And the life, that's definite. I am the res resurrection and the life. So it means that I carry life on this me. That's if you are born again. I can on the inside of me. So if you carry something, do you think you can give it? Okay, that's another level now. Maybe I'll save that till another time. Can, can give it. I'm not what I want to get. But don't respond to me because that's what I want to hear. Be sure, be certain. About your response. I carry life. Actually, I can give life. Through Jesus. That's why when I'm not scared to pray for the sick and they get healed. You can do the same. Hallelujah. That's why I can, I can, I can minister in the spirit. And it will happen. Because I carry of life. I carry. For a very when I came, I didn't see no we were in because I chose God to help me to minister healing to myself when I'm sick. I have life. Family doctor now anyway. So say pastor did not get so you know get. We have a family doctor. Praise God. Hallelujah. Because it's very important as well. Praise the Lord. Let's just look at one more scripture about Jesus. And then we close this morning. Isaiah chapter 9. Isaiah chapter 9 verse 6. This is one of the scriptures on the city of David is standing on. I want us to read this scripture together. Can we read together, everybody?
be called wonderful, counselor, mighty God. Come on, say it. Who is the everlasting Father? If say it now, now, he came in the form of what? A child through a virgin. So don't stop making that mistake. You have known Jesus, you have known God. Seven, I think. From verse cannot contain you. The whole of Canada cannot contain you because you are wonderful. We thank you for the revelation of yourself to us this morning.